me tell you a little bit about it, and, and then I think it speaks to some of the aspects of what's going on up in Santa Fe and up in the Roundhouse. And so, you know, primarily, I believe there's been a few speakers on the tax package, or you've hopefully read a little bit about it, so I'm not going to go into too much depth on the actual pieces of it, but for those of you who weren't aware of what happened, basically uh, there was a bill at the end, it was actually the film credit bill, and a whole mixed bag of things got amended into it uh, at the very end of the session. And what's in there is, is uh, a film credit for an increase for TV production, there's also closing high wage job loopholes, uh, I'll talk about what that does, but basically if you're in the business of marketing, unfortunately your taxes are going to go up. Um, it also included combined reporting so that uh, big boxes and franchises are going to have to pay the same corporate taxes that uh, everyone else does. It also included the hold harmless provision, which I know this is all very sort of tax, but uh, hold harmless is a big deal. It's we basically give the cities a check every year in exchange uh, to compensate for other tax changes that we've done. And this bill removed the hold harmless provision. Um, we also did single sales factor, and so I know Gary's here. Gary had a good session, uh, congratulations. So we, we, did, we did single sales factor, and that was actually something I worked on uh, as well. I do think, regardless of the politics associated with it, that is a job creation initiative. Uh, and so I was, I was glad that got in there. We also decreased corporate income tax, which of course uh, we'll, we'll get into a little bit more uh, on the impact of that. So that's what this package was. This was all one bill. And it, it actually wasn't even a bill, it was amended uh, into another bill, literally at the 11th hour. And, and the politics around this, I think, are important to share. And, and really, what, when you look at this bill as a whole, there is something in this bill for everyone to like. And there's also something in this bill for everyone to loathe. And that's, that's probably why it passed, actually. Uh, but uh, the, the challenge is, it, 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 I think for a lot of us, I mean, it, it was a tough vote, it still is a tough vote. And we're going to have to do a lot of things going forward to clean this one up. Uh, it is the perfect example of the kind of, you know, sort of sausage analogy that um, our democracy puts together for you up in Santa Fe. So on here, I mean, if we break it down, if you want to look at it from the governor's perspective, you know, she got about half of what she wanted. She got half the amount of corporate tax cut reduction, and she got single sales factor, but only for manufacturing companies. Um, on the other hand, there are tax increases all over in this bill. So again, something to like, something to not like. For the legislature, you know, we, we took money away from education, uh, but then we take it back uh, from the cities. So in the long run, for our, our forecast 10 years out, because of this whole harmless provision, there's going to be more money for education that the state can put in, because we're not giving it to the cities. So, you know, again, a real mixed bag. And, and also for the cities, you know, they are now going to have to deal with a phased in, a 14 year phase in period for this hold harmless provision. But by the same token, it's lower corporate tax for their economic development initiatives. The TV uh, film piece was big for Albuquerque. That was something that was really important to them. And so, or to us here in Albuquerque. And, and, and so, I mean, I think, it, you know, clearly I think the cities lose the most in this situation, but, but it's still a mixed bag for them. And, you know, if, you're, if you happen to be on the, on the left side of the aisle, um, you know, you get to tax Chevron, you get to tax Target now, you get to tax McDonald's, all these companies who, you know, we perceive have gotten free rides. We also get to protect the food tax, which is something that is, is very regressive. Uh, but on the other hand, there's a tax cut for corporations, which typically folks on that side aren't really into. On the other end of the spectrum, you know, uh, this is helping business, and it's really helping AED and recruit businesses. Uh, but on the other hand, um, it's not helping you if you're one of these companies that gets caught up in combined reporting or in some of the other fixes uh, with respect to pyramiding. You're actually raising taxes. So, you know, I think you guys get the idea. This is a real uh, mixed bag bill. And, and I think it's a product also of, of the process. So when I say this was the 11th hour, um, I got this bill with 20 minutes left on the clock. And so for those of you who know, our session ends at noon, no matter what. Well, theoretically, this bill actually ran a couple of minutes over noon. So uh, you have to, you gotta make the decision, you know, then and there. And so, so we had, and it was about, I think it was maybe a 37 page bill, something like that. So on the House side, I, I don't want to speak to what happened in the other chamber because I wasn't in there. They, I think, had seven minutes to look at this bill. 
Um, they had never seen it before. And, uh, you know, we in the Senate have been working on these issues for a long time, actually. These, a lot of these tax issues have been around for several years. And we had, we had a whole 20 minutes to look at it, you know. Um, so it, at the end of the day, you know, a lot of people basically had to say, well, do I vote for it because the things I like in it, or do I vote against it because of the things I don't like in it? And that was really the choice at the end of the day. But, you know, the flip side of this is, would this bill ever have passed if it didn't happen in the 11th hour? Well, the answer is no. Uh, it's, there's too much in it, there's too much to shoot down. So, you know, here I think we have one of these sort of trade-offs about where we're at in the legislature. Uh, if you want a big change idea, which, which I wouldn't even call this big change, uh, this is mild by comparison, um, you know, we really struggle to get something like this done. And, and there's all sorts of questions now associated with it. One is, is it revenue neutral? So from a tax perspective, you know, we, we want to have enough funding to fund everything that, that the state government has. And we had testimony that it was revenue positive to the tune of 200 million. Uh, and then we have also reports coming out now that it's revenue negative. 200 million. And the bottom line is, I mean, there's been three different fiscal impact reports on this since the bill passed. And when we voted on it, there wasn't even a single fiscal impact report. So, you know, this thing, um, we have no idea what the impact is going to be. And I think, I think we can all talk around the details, but I don't think we do. And I think we hope that at least it helps create jobs, you know. Uh, but I think we also agree that, you know, this is not a jobs package. Uh, I would love to stand up here and tell you about some jobs package we passed. This is mild tax reform, uh, and hopefully it helps out everyone in New Mexico. You know, that's, that's clearly the goal of it, but I think, uh, I think we're kidding ourselves if we call it something else. And I think, you know, it's a, a little bit cynical, but for me, when I look back on this, it bothers me, because I look back on the policy front and the process, and I say, is this the best our legislature can do for New Mexico? You know, we have got to be able to do things better than the way uh, we handled this bill. And, and, I, and, and I'll speak to that, I think, more just in the end, but that's the story of the tax bill. So let's hope it works. The good news is it's phased in over time, and uh, I, I am sure people will already be trying to clean it up uh, next session. In fact, there's a legal issue with combined reporting and the definition of retailer. It's already going to court, so uh, uh, we'll be back on this one. So one other story I'll share with you is, is the tax expenditure budget. And in this one, again, tax related. What this is, this is one of my favorite bills that I've, I've run a lot, and this is actually the second time I've run it. All this bill does is it just creates a simple accounting, a return on investment for all our tax incentives, deductions, and exemptions. And believe it or not, there are a lot of those. So to the extent you haven't heard about this, there are at least $1 billion worth of tax expenditures in our tax code. That's about 20% of our budget. So if you want to use the sort of Swiss cheese analogy in our piece of cheese, 20% of it is holes. And the tragedy is we can't actually tell you how much it is because we have never been able to sort of go through the analytical exercise to calculate it. And we also can't tell you how many jobs they create. So we have no idea if the good ones should be doubled down on and if the ones that are redundant or wasteful should be closed. And, and to me, this is, you know, this is sort of the, the ultimate tragedy if you're trying to actually really make some big change moves in New Mexico, is that we can't even get the information. It's a prerequisite to real tax reform and to real job creation. So I run this bill every year, the tax expenditure budget. 27 other states do it. It was first run in 2003 by a, by a Republican uh, and uh, up from Clayton, and it passed unanimously, vetoed by Governor Richardson. Um, and, and who knows why at the time I wasn't around. I come around in 2011, think it's a great idea, still think it's a great idea, run it again, bipartisan sponsorship, vetoed by Governor Martinez. There wasn't a single vote against either of those bills in either of those years. Uh, so I got some feedback from the fourth floor. They said, you know, it's, it's hard to do. I know 27 other states do it, but it's gonna take a lot of time, a lot of resources. This year I ran the bill and stretched it out over five years. So you just have to analyze 20% of these expenditures every five years. Passes, very few votes against it again, vetoed again. And, and I think this, this is another example of, of some of the challenges that we're facing up in Santa Fe. And it's that, you know, the power, one thing is the power of the status quo is really, really strong. And the status quo in our state, if you want to do business, is related to your ability to get a tax exemption or a tax expenditure up in Santa Fe. 
So I would actually argue to you that when people say New Mexico is a good place to do business or a bad place to do business, it is a great place to do business for everyone who has one of those tax expenditures. Um, and, uh, and, and they know the return on investment for their legislative dollars spent and the whole deal. And so um, that also speaks to, it, it, some of it also gets back to this branch rivalry thing. There's this issue about the executive branch through now both governors, both parties, not wanting to open up this notion of return on investment in our tax expenditures. And I think it's because it, it creates all sorts of questions that no one wants to answer. And, uh, and again, that, that's, uh, that's just something that, who knows, uh, the next governor, whoever that is, will probably have the same approach. Uh, and that's something we've actually got to get over because I, I think we cannot have meaningful job creation and we cannot have meaningful tax reform in New Mexico without the information. And, and that's why this bill is fought tooth and nail behind the scenes and also why no legislative votes against it now three times running. So anyway, that's a couple of stories of, of two bills in the session and, and hopefully it at least illuminates, I think, some, some positives and some negatives about where we're at as a state. And you know, for me, in terms of where are we and where are we going, you know, I